Right, the wings are on. Absolutely love this shape. Really elegant. So these are completely bespoke. I've never made them before. So on this one, I'm trying to work out how to fill the back in. I'll just mock up what I'm doing here using these leftover handles. I'm trying to come up with an effect here that kind of transitions the wings into the body. Quite a really nice shape. Got the back finished. Just put a blend in ahead now. Right, I started these off with uh, a small drill bit for accuracy. Now I'm going to use this tapered one, a bit of cutting oil. on the inside there, make the uh, ball bearing sit in there a little bit better. Right, got this lovely apple wood, beautiful contours on it, nice grain, shook them up even better with some Danish oil on it, but a lovely shapely bit of wood, you just want to run your hands all over it or something, it's lovely. Anyway, the plan is to uh, mount the metal bit in there, and then with the bird suspended from that, create a network of metal branches, a bit like the, the wrens I did recently. I'll do the same with the other bird as well. Right, there's a bit of cleaning up to do here, but I'm making some stainless steel branches which will mount in the applewood, stretch around here. Really useful addition to the workshop is an authentic Dremel. I want to give a shout out to Daryl, Daryl Olson Metal Art. He's been talking about these for years, recommending I get one. Uh, I finally did it. Normally I use uh, die grinders with these carbide burrs in, but this is much better at getting into the tough to reach areas, particularly with like a flexible uh, extension that comes with it. Brilliant, brilliant tool. So what I'm doing here with the branches is uh, using the burr to hock out material, trying to get rid of all the straight lines to give it a more organic shape. Also by keeping the burr moving really quickly you can add this finish. It looks a little bit like bark. I quite like it. It's a really organic shape to it. Also gets the light reflecting off all these tiny little imperfections in the surface. It's quite a nice finish. Alright, this is nearly finished now. I've got a few little marks to get out of the wood and uh, I'm going to use some Danish oil to darken it down and really bring out this grain. Lovely bit of wood with all these lumps and curves in it. I really do like it a lot. So the bird this particular bird, I'm going to mount up here, something like that. Right, so I've been making some other stuff as well. I was asked to make a hummingbird recently, second one I've made. First one looked a little bit like this. I made that about 18 months ago. Uh, this one's slightly different. The head, uh, instead of using negative space to suggest the shape of the head, I've actually filled this one in with the back. 
and put the eyes in as well. So I didn't film a lot of myself making this, I kind of got into it one day and by the time I'd done it, I kind of realised I hadn't filmed much. Got a little bit of hummingbird action going on here. So this is three grapefruit spoons to make a body. These wings are just the remains of what were sort of cake serving things. In order to give an effect of feathers, I just need to change the way that the light bounces off the surface. So I can do that by just removing a little bit of material like this. And as the light hits it, that will give a feather effect. So that's what I'm going to do next. Right, I'm jumping way ahead with this hummingbird. So the wings, I did the inner wings with uh, some more bicycle gear cog. That's looking quite nice. I may angle that tail slightly more down, but that's pretty blingy. I really like the look of that. Uh, if enough of you get in the comments and want to know how I made this, I'll make a separate video on this. Quite pretty. So it needs a wooden mount as well, a little flower for the beak to sit in. Okay, so getting the remains of the bark off, I used 80 grit. It's quite a hard wood, apple wood, it's not quite as hard as oak, but relatively hard. Go over it to 240 after that and it comes up lovely and smooth. It really is a lovely bit of wood. So now what I'm going to do is go over it with Danish oil. That could be in dark oak, we'll give that three or four coats. It's going to darken it down and it's going to really bring the grain out, make it look a lot richer. Okay, here we go. So while I'm doing this, I'll just tell you the backstory of the uh, of the cutlery for these birds. This cutlery belonged to uh, a very nice lady, sadly I never had the pleasure of meeting, called Gina, who is no longer with us. And her son, who was a friend of mine, was settling her estate, came across all her old cutlery. And uh, she had a lot of this beautiful pattern cutlery. And knowing what I do, uh, he asked if I could do something with it, like make a nice memento, a nice keepsake. So that's the story behind these two birds. That's quite a nice fitting sort of tribute to be able to turn something that otherwise has not really got a purpose into something that will serve as a nice reminder and potentially last a long time as well.